Rachis Dav Yudches. Before we get into some amazing stories, let's first talk about halachas that have to do with the dead. There's a concept called loig l'rash, poking fun at the dead, causing the dead to be jealous. And that includes not only mitzvahs, but even eating in front of the dead, as we're going to see. So you're not going to walk four amas within the dead, or in a cemetery next to Kvarim, and say Kriya Shema, Adam Shmon Esri, say Kaddish, Tehillim, etc. You're not allowed to hold the Sefer Torah in your hand and read from the Sefer Torah. It says Tosfos. You're not allowed to even say Torah Bal Peh, and you shouldn't wear your tzitzis outside. It causes the dead to be jealous. If you see a funeral procession, you must accompany the procession. Otherwise, the dead is going to be upset. He's going to say, "Why doesn't this person come to my funeral?" And if you do, says the Gemara, then it's as if you accompanied Hakadosh Baruch Hu himself. It's also to eat in front of the dead, and therefore, if one has to eat, he should leave. The house that the dead person is in, go to his own home, go to his friend's home. If you don't have a friend's home, build a wall. If you can't build a wall, then turn your back to the dead and then you eat. As an oval, it's also to be massive, it's also to lean, it's also to eat meat and drink wine. And it's, you shouldn't, says Rashi, you don't need to make a bracha, not a bracha rishonah, not a bracha chrona. According to other rishonim, it's also to make brachas. And it's also for other people to be might you. And according to Rashi, other people don't have to be might you with the bracha. But on Shabbos, all those halachas don't apply. You could lean, you could eat meat, you could drink wine. And the zemachlaik is whether or not you're chayev in oina. Someone who's dealing with the burial of his own relative, he's oisig by mitzvah, and therefore he's potter from all the mitzvahs. He's potter from kriyash, matfilin, shemina esrei, etc. The zemachlaik is in the Gemara what that means exactly. Rav Papa says that it's only if the dead is right in front of him, then he's oisig by mitzvah. But once he leaves the house, he's not there, then there's no longer a chayev to there's no longer a p'tur to do other mitzvahs. According to Ravashi, you see by Avram Avinu that even though he was dealing with Ephraim and Sarah was no longer in front of him, the Torah considers it as if Sarah was in front of him. He's still dealing with it in his head and therefore he's potter from all mitzvahs. What about the people that carry the Aram, the pole barriers? They are all potter from Shemar Esrei. The ones that are in front of the Aram, they haven't had a chance to hold Aram yet. They are potter from Kriyashma. The ones in the back, they already held onto the Aram, they want to hold it again. They must say, Kriyashma. Those people that come to comfort the Avelim, that's also a mitzvah. They're also Isaac and Mitzvah, Padim and Mitzvah. If they have a chance to say the first Pasuk, or according to the other sheet of the first parasha, they should say so. And if they don't have a chance, then the inner ones standing in the inner rows, that they are the ones saying directly to the Avelim, Hamachim Yenachim, and giving them the words of comfort, they are Padim from Kriyashma. The ones on the outer rows that don't really say directly to the Avel, they are Chayev in Kriyashma. What about those, the Shoimrim, the people that watch the body? It seems like from the Gemara that they were watching them from ice. They are also considered Isaac by mitzvah, they are potter from a mitzvah. If there are two of them, then one could go to the side and daven while the other one watches. On a ship, there's machlegas whether there are mice or not, if that's a concern. According to one man, there is, and therefore one should watch the body. According to another man, both of them should go to the side once my Kriyashma comes and say Kriyashma. There's an Isser to treat bones of the deceased without respect, you have to treat it with respect. And the same halacha applies to Sefer Torah. Therefore, you don't take bones and throw it into a sack and throw it on a donkey. The same thing with the Sefer Torah. Unless you're concerned that people will come and steal the Sefer Torah or do something to the bones, you can throw it on a donkey. Now, the Gemara discusses, and here are all the beautiful stories, what exactly do the dead people know? What do they hear? What do they understand? Because we're talking about Loig Rush, you know how to poke fun at a dead person. What does he understand? It comes out of Maskana Sasugya that a dead person can feel pain. Some say it means his neshama feels the pain. But if an insect is eating the body, he feels that pain. If there's a malach called Duma, he's in charge of the dead, he announces that a certain person is going to die soon, within a day or so, and the other dead people, they know that. They know that he's coming up. Dead people could get information and news from visitors. Other dead people come up and tell them what's going on down below. They could get that information. And... In a situation where the person whose nifter is a great hush of a person, they will in fact announce that his arrival way before he is nifter, as the Gemara discusses regarding Shmuel. Says the Gemara, the sons of Rebbechia were wondering if their father who already was nifter, does he know about their pain? Because they forgot their learning, they were busy working, and they forgot their learning, and it bothered them a lot, and they were wondering whether the father in Shemaim knows about it. One of them said, what do you mean? It's a positive. Dead people don't know anything. Says the other one, you didn't learn right pshat. is referring to the Rishayim. They're in this world. They're not concerned about death. But Tzadikim, even when they're dead, they're considered alive. But Tzadik is always concerned about Elam and what the future holds for him. 
Gemara talks about Benoyo Ben Yoyado, that there's nobody like him in the first Mikdash and the second Mikdash. The Gemara says perhaps he was toivel in the ice, he cut, up, uh, cut open the ice and was toivel inside, or it means that he went through the entire Sefer de Beirav, which is the heart of Sefer, says Taisus, in one day, in one short winter day. Says the Gemara, amazing story. There was once a chassid, usually when the Gemara says chassid, it's referring to a Yudah Bar Yilai, or a Yudah Ben Bava, that his wife really bothered him, to the point that he had to sleep in the cemetery, and we're talking about Rosh Hashanah night. He was sleeping in the cemetery and he heard two ruchais, two young girls that were nifter, they were talking to each other and he said, let's fly around the world, let's see what's going on. Ma'achariya pargu behind the mechitzah where Baruch Hu is with the shechinahs. Says one, I cannot fly, I'm buried in machzel shulchanim in reeds. The tzlach explains, since her body did, didn't decompose, therefore she couldn't fly. Says, she tells her friend, you go out there, tell me what you hear. And she went out there and she heard that whoever plants b'revi rishayna, in the first, says Rashi, he's talking about the 17th day of Cheshven, the seven days, and then comes the second Revia, and then comes the third Revia seven days later. Whoever plants then, hail is going to come and destroy the crop. So this Chassid did not plant in the Revia Roshayna, he planted in the Revia Shnia, and he made a lot of money. The following year, he decided to do this trick on his own. So he went and he camped out in the base of Kfaris, and sure enough, he hears the two Ruchai saying, let's go fly, I can't fly, I'm in Machzel Shekhanim. So you come back and tell me, and she said, I heard that whoever plants in the second Revia, the Shibafa in the heat is going to come and ruin the crop, so he planted in the first, and therefore he made money, everybody else lost their crop. Says his wife, how did you know to do this? So he told his wife the secret. The wife had a big fight with the mother of the girl that was flying around in the paragon, and she made fun of the mother, of the other mother, and she said, I know that your daughter was buried by Machzel Shalkanim. Third year, the Chassid goes to the cemetery, and he hears the Ruchai saying, let's go fly around, and one Ruach said to the other, I cannot fly because the live people are already saying, they're making fun of my mother, that she buried me with Machzel Shekhanim. So you see that the dead do know. So the Gemara, perhaps, somebody came, somebody who was nifter, told her. Ziri once gave money to a lady and she died, and he went and he asked her in her grave, where's the money? And she told him exactly where it was. And she also said, tell my mother that we're going to have a visitor soon tomorrow. Please send my comb and my makeup. And that's because she must have heard it from Duma the Malach that announces. The Gemara says that Avu the Shmuel used to take the money of the orphans and he was nifter and people started making fun of his son Shmuel and they called him the son of the person that steals money from the orphans. So he went to the Bisak Faris and he sees that Levi didn't make it into Shemayim because Levi hurt his Rebbe by not going to the Shir. And he sees his father and his father's crying and laughing. Why are you crying? Because you're going to be nifter soon. Why are you laughing? Because they consider you as a huge individual here in Shemayim. So he said, if I'm so big, have Levi go up to Shemayim. In fact, Levi went up to Shemayim. He says, where's the money? The money is buried between our money. There's a sandwich. Our money, the Yisraeli's money, and our money. I didn't want it to get ruined. I didn't want people to steal. And in fact, they returned the money. Akopanim, you see that the dead know what's going on, but it's different because Shmuel was such a hush of a person. They announced it in Shemayim way in advance. Have a wonderful day.